Kia ora friends, welcome to Gina's Miniature Studio and I'm Gina and today I am going to be painting a couple of miniature paintings in three different scales so 112th, 124th and 148th scale. I've been leaning into some of the smaller scales recently so I thought this would be a great opportunity to practice my skills of miniature painting but also into a couple of different scales that I could use easily into a couple of different projects. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing some rough sort of sketches there's not really much detail in them just to try and get an idea of sort of some composition what I feel is going to be easier for me to paint especially considering this is probably this is the first floral painting that I've really ever done. Thank God it's a miniature. Um, so once I've kind of settled on a combination of the first three and I kind of merged them together uh, I'm just going to grab some alcohol markers and really just kind of throw down a bit of colour just to kind of see what I like, um, what isn't working, getting in some sort of shadows and bits and pieces. So once I'm happy with that then I can move on to the next step. So to begin with what I'm going to do is just sketch out the painting just with the very basic shapes of the flowers and where everything is going to go. So I'm just going to do that and this is on a bit of 3mm MDF so I'm just going to use it sort of like as a canvas. And what I'm going to do first off, this might seem to sound a little bit weird, but uh, I'm actually going to prime the canvas. So I'm just going to put a bit of raw sienna I think it might be that right over the top, just a watered down wash right over the top so I can still see the pencil line coming through. And what that allows me to do is really start to see some of the warmth of that colour come through from underneath. But equally I'm not trying to put some darker colours down next to white and for it to be so extreme because I really want this to be sort of a darker moody type of look. So I'm going to start off with painting the vase. I sort of want it to be sort of an almost like an amber glass type of vase. So once I've got that down then I can go through and put the watermark in where the water's sitting in the vase. So going to put that in and just put a little bit more definition to the vase, sort of a bit of shadow on each side with the lighter part of the vase at the very front. Once I'm happy with that I'm just going to start by putting a bit of a highlight piece across on the vase as if there's light shining on the glass and then I'm just going to add in some stems into the water. To begin the flowers uh, I really wasn't really too sure what I was doing here to be honest so what I'm starting to do is just block in some colour. That was my thought process here was just to block in some colour with some of those overall shapes and then I've just picked up a slightly darker colour with the same, a darker tone with the same colour actually and uh, just starting to put in or try to put in some a few more details. So I kind of go backwards and forwards on that just trying to kind of give it a little bit more uh, detail. I'm also going to do that for the flowers in the background and I'm going to start with a sort of a very lavender grey, it's sort of very kind of very light purple I suppose you could say and yeah very light kind of lavender and then that's at the very top and at the very base of the flower I'm going in with some orange. No idea what type of flowers they, these are, um, I've just kind of made them up and uh, just picked colours that I 
thought I would try. So there's no rhyme or reason to these particular flowers. And then now I'm just going to go in and paint all of the stems and just to add in a bit of greenery just to make sure that the flowers aren't too high and adding in a few leaves to cover up some of that negative space and it starts to come to life. Funny that. It's a still life. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to move on to painting the background. Now this is probably the first lesson that I learnt was not to do it around this way. If I was going to do it again I would probably try and paint the background first and then paint the flowers on top of that and potentially could have painted it in this sort of moody grey. It still would have given me the same type of look. Might not have got as much warmth coming through underneath. Anyway, I, I think if I'm going to paint this again, actually this is a painting that I'm thinking about doing for a class. So I think if I was going to do it for a class just to try and keep it as simple as possible, I think what I would do is get the learners to paint the background first and try and blend in some of those colours. Maybe even paint the vase and the table and the background before painting the flowers. I think that was probably the... The lesson to be learnt here. I mean it works out in the end, it just takes a little bit of time because I've got to nicely paint all in around the leaves and the flowers and just trying to make sure that I can get some shadow and gradient and all that kind of good stuff happening in the background as well as making sure I'm watching what I'm doing with my paintbrush. So yeah I think for ease of painting I think I would probably paint the background first next time. So because I've painted the background uh, I need to go in and paint over some of the leaves. What I've done here is actually darkened the green that I've used up a bit and I'm just going into more of those center leaves. Uh, and just try to add some more shadows and definition and dimension actually to the actual leaves themselves. And then um, adding in a sort of a lighter green, I'm just going to touch the very top of each one of those very outstretched branches or outstretched kind of leaves. So just to add in a little bit of light and shade, I'm just adding in these little tiny wee flowers just with a little bit of white paint and just sort of three little dots uh, that's all they are so nothing too detailed again and then I'm just going to brighten up that or broaden that uh, reflection um, when I was painting it it felt like it needed it but actually when I was looking at going back over the the video it didn't actually feel like it needed it at all but there you go uh, I'm just adding in a little bit of um, pure yellow into the flowers to just to add the, a little bit more definition and then a little bit of yellow in the middle of those white flowers and now I'm just taking a bit of sort of brown and black mixed together and just detailing up the center of those flowers just to add again a little bit more shade into the piece so a little bit of uh, yeah, light and shade into it and then finally I'm just going to go around and touch the very tops of each one of those flowers that I've made up with a little bit of white paint to try and pick out a little bit of detail and just kind of help bring those to life so that they don't blend so much into the background.
So recently I've been uploading videos less frequently. I mentioned it in a couple of previous videos, but if you're new here, welcome. So what I've been doing is a couple of DIY projects around the house, which I enjoy probably just as much as what I do miniatures. I've kind of just about finished those, so I'm really pleased about that. But what that means is that I'm able to get back into doing a few more miniatures, which is starting off with this little project. The other thing that's been going on in my life is that I have got a new role within my work which I am super excited about but a little bit overwhelmed not for the actual role but what that actually means is that there is some change in my life and so everybody deals with change slightly differently and it just takes time to uh, for a sense of normality to come back into it so I'm super excited about it. Is it, like, it is quite a challenge for me for this new role so stepping outside my comfort zone a little bit is not a bad thing because that is your growth zone so I'm really reminded of that every time I kind of uh, lean into something a little bit new and a little bit different but what I am reminded of is that there's a lot going on there's a lot of context switching going on for me and so context switching is where you're uh, doing one thing and then needing to switch into something completely different and it takes some time for you to kind of go what am I doing what is this project what is this thing where am I up to and it just takes a little bit of time to get back into it although we can't eliminate context switching so one of the things that we do is manage try to manage our uh, work in progress or manage our WIP we would love to abbreviate things so manage our work in pro progress and so for me I've got not only work which is new and that's change and so I'm, I'm kind of navigating my way through that uh, I've also got my pipe band which is for me is another source of enjoyment I really really enjoy it it is a team sport so often if I'm not available or can't be there I'm not only letting myself down but I'm actually letting a team down or letting others down so really conscious of that and then of course I've got my miniatures and in a previous video I posted all of the projects that I've got either on the go up and coming that are ideas that I'd love to bring to life some kits that I've got that are just sitting there waiting to be waiting to be put together what I'm going to try and do is try and limit my whip in my life so how that's going to show up for me is I'm going to try and reduce the amount of projects that I've got on the go when it comes to my miniatures so I'm going to try and get as many of the current projects that I've got on the go finished and or at least is closer to finishing so you'll see some sort of back-to-back -back project videos rather than sort of jumping all over the place I'll probably fit in some smaller projects like this one just to try and break things up a little bit so that I keep uh, things interesting mainly for myself but hopefully for also for you as well one of the things that I am also reminded of is that when we st when I'm starting to look at my own life and managing the amount of work that I've got in progress these are all actually transferable skills and I'm reminded that we often have lots of different things in our lives where our skills can be transferred from one area of our life to another and so when we're thinking about learning new things or you know taking on new things often we've already got those skills already in our toolbox and uh, which may actually be showing up in a different part of our life so for me managing my work in progress is one way that I can actually have a transferable skill from my work life into my miniatures but equally it can actually show up in the other in the reverse so being creative having to problem solve all of those sorts of things in my creative life I can actually transfer that into my work life so there is absolutely reciprocal transferable skills in everything that we do so I just kind of thought that I would share that with you I've kind of been on this little bit of a journey recently and I feel like I've come out the other side of it now which I'm super excited about and I'm super excited to be getting back into a more regular cadence of uh, posting videos which I'm sure that you will all be super happy about so yeah let's uh, let's get back into the project and for some really quick frames I found this file on Thingiverse and just used my 3D printer to print it off luckily it does come in the four sizes I didn't adjust any sizing on the file and just gave it a quick spray with some gold spray paint which I have got and now I'm just wanting to age it up a little bit and really start to define some of the details that are in the frame because it's actually really detailed which is really cool 
and uh, just using a bit of black paint and some water so watered down black paint just to kind of allow it to sort of sit into all those nooks and crannies so it's really starting to look really good and then all I need to do now is cut those paper paintings down to size and put them into the project and luckily enough I'd made four paintings so three of them were on paper and one is on that three mil MDF canvas and so it was a nice easy project to put together so if you've liked this video hit that like button it really does help YouTube's algorithm share the video wide to a wider audience and if you haven't done so already consider subscribing to the channel have a fabulous week everyone and until next time I'll see you then bye for now mm -hmm.